Thank you, Barry, for that reading. For those of you who don't know me, my name's Darren. Uh, I'm, uh, I work here in East London. I live across the road here in East London. I've been worshipping here at SPS in East London for the last seven years, and I'm pretty much nailed to East London, and I love it. Um, and we are in the middle of an Easter series. We are looking at uh, resurrection. We're looking at resurrection and what resurrection means for us. And resurrection is really exciting. Today we're looking at new creation. We're looking at new creation. And the passage that we just heard was from the revelation to John, the apostle. And God says through him, I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And that sounds really exciting to me. But you might be reading that and you might well be thinking, well, you know, I'm I'm looking around and it's a beautiful bank holiday weekend and the sun's beating down and the rain's pattering across the basin and you know there's HMS Ocean down there on the Isle of Dogs keeping us safe and West Ham could still end up in the Premiership and it doesn't actually look that bad you know you could be thinking that why do we need a new earth when this one is actually not so bad when this one is actually looking pretty good well the Bible tells us that the whole earth will be made new The Bible tells us that the whole earth needs to be made new. And the Bible tells us that God has already started making everything new. And the passage that we just heard read from the book of Revelation, that's from the last book of the Bible. It's the end of the story. And in order to make sense of why we might need a new heaven and a new earth, we need to go back to the beginning In order to make sense of the end, we need to go back to the beginning to understand how we ended up here. We need to go back to the start and work out how we landed in this place. And what that means is what I'm going to attempt this morning is to cover the whole of the story of the Bible. We're going to start in Genesis. We're going to land in uh, Revelation. Uh, I know that some of you have immediately started thinking about Sunday lunch and uh, whether it's going to burn in the oven before we're finished, but I promise uh, that we will get through it and we will get a handle on what the new creation is all about. So let's nail this bad boy and let's pray. (laughs) Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for creation. We thank you for new creation. Lord, we thank you that all of creation comes through Jesus. We thank you that through Jesus, everything is made new. And Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit would come this morning. Lord, we pray that you would break down our walls as we've just been singing. That you would speak into our hearts, Lord. We pray that you would help us to see Jesus as the beginning and the end of your work that you would help us to know Jesus as the start and the finish of your plans for us. And Lord, it's in his mighty name that we pray. Amen? Amen. So you might want to turn with me to the beginning of the Bible. Either use the church Bibles, they're in the back of the chairs in front of you, or go to that on your phone or your Bible app, or Rod's probably got his iPad. Um, And uh, that's where we're going to start. (laughs) Old tech. (laughs) You need new creation, iPads. (laughs) This is where we're going to start. Book 1, chapter 1, verse 1, Genesis 1. We read, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And just so we're clear, the heavens and the earth means everything. Everything has been created by God. The sun and the moon and the planets created by God. The mountains and the hills and the trees created by God. The birds and the fish and the animals created by God. Everything created by God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He brought everything into existence out of nothing. And just so we know, nothing is a very hard medium to work with. (laughs) If I have a world to create, I tend to like to start with some, you know, basic building blocks. God created everything out of nothing. There was nothing. And God spoke. And there was a universe. And on the sixth day, we see what the high point was of this whole creation. 
On the sixth day, we see what the pinnacle was of all God's creating work. On the sixth day, we see what the very best thing was that God created. We see God at the top of his creative game. Chapter 1, verse 27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them. God created the first man and the first woman. They were filled with God's blessing. And God told them to fill the earth. God told them to subdue the earth. God told them to rule over the earth, to rule over the fish, to rule over the birds, to rule over every living creature. Because the man and his wife were created to rule over the earth on God's behalf. The first man is created to be a king. A king over the earth. Ruling over the rest of creation. Subduing creation under God so that the whole of creation can be a place that God can come into and live in with the people that he's created. So that the whole of creation can be a place where God can meet with, interact with, enjoy the people that he's created. And all of that would be amazing all by itself. Genesis chapter 2, the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. And then God does something else, verse 3, God blessed the seventh day and God made it holy because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. I work for five days a week. That's not true. I get paid to work five days a week. I probably work more than five days a week. And at the end of it, I'm, I'm, I'm knackered, you know, and I tend to need to rest. And rest for me mostly means getting horizontal. It means, you know, lying down and kicking back. Uh, yesterday, I managed to get an hour's sleep in the afternoon because I was so tired because it's been quite a busy week. I know some of you with kids would love an hour's sleep in the afternoon. You know, sleep, kids don't go together. (laughs) Um, But God didn't rest because he was tired. God didn't rest because he was worn out. God didn't rest because he was knackered. He wasn't kicking back because he'd had enough. He rested because he was satisfied. He rested because creation was finished. He rested because he'd done everything necessary for a perfect universe to come into existence. He'd created a man to rule over creation. He'd created a man to be king with his wife over creation, to fill the earth, to subdue it, and to give birth to a people for God to come and live with. The seventh day, the Sabbath day, the holy day, God sets apart. He sets it apart for God's purposes, for God's enjoyment, for God's satisfaction, and for man's satisfaction, for human being's satisfaction, for our celebration and enjoyment of a relationship with God. So when God creates the universe, he does three things, more than three things, but let's stick with three. He creates a holy space, a holy space where God will meet with his people. He creates a holy time, that last day of creation, when God delights and enjoys his people, delights in his people, enjoys them, and they worship him and serve him and enjoy him in return. And then thirdly, the first man is created as a, as a holy king made in God's image to rule over creation, to subdue it, to keep everything in order, to keep evil out, and to make it a place where God can enjoy his people forever. God creates a holy space, he creates a holy time, and he puts a holy king in charge. And the term that the Bible uses most to describe God's holy space is temple, the house of God. And the term that the Bible uses most to describe God's holy time is Sabbath, or the day of the Lord. And the term that the Bible uses for God's holy king is Messiah, God's anointed king, in Greek, Christ. And if those words sound very religious to you, if they sound very churchy, it's really important to remember that God's plan in creation... God's plan in creation was that the whole earth would be his temple where he would dwell with his people. 
and that the whole of time from beginning to end would be continual Sabbath celebration, festival, worship, where he would enjoy his people and they would enjoy him. And God's plan in creation was always that the whole earth would be ruled over by men and women working together, ruling the whole earth under God. This is God's perfect creation. Holy space, holy time, a holy king, the whole world a temple filled with worship forever under human beings, under God. And this is God's plan for the world. This is God's plan for creation. This is God's plan for us. And God has never changed his mind. God has never had second thoughts. God has never resorted to plan B. There is no plan B. This is God's plan. The only thing that's changed is us. The only thing which changed is us. So the first man and the first woman, they looked at this plan and they thought that they had a better one. You can see it there in chapter 3, verse 8. The man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God. So they've eaten the fruit, they've said yes to Satan, and the Hebrew there literally is they hid themselves from the face of the Lord God. And you can see what they're doing. They're saying no to God. They're saying no to God. They're saying no to the holy place, to the whole of creation as a temple. They don't want to be in the presence of God. They want to run away. They're saying no to the holy time. They're saying no to Sabbath forever. They don't want to enjoy worshipping and serving God forever. They want to hide. And they're saying no to their job, to their God-given job as rulers of the earth under God because they don't want to be answerable to God. They want to go freestyle and do this on their own. And that's what they did. That's what we've done. And that's why the earth needs to be made new. That's why the earth needs to be made new because we said no to a world which was a holy place lasting forever in holy time with us ruling as holy kings and instead we said yes to a very different plan instead we said yes to a very different plan instead we said yes to the lies of Satan instead we said yes to the rebellion against God which is sin instead we said yes to the separation from God which is death death And that could have been the end. That could have been the end. But God worked patiently with his people over hundreds of years, hundreds and hundreds of years, teaching them in his word about his plans for creation, teaching them in his word about the temple where he would live with them, teaching them in his word about the Sabbath, about the day of the Lord, when his people would worship him forever, teaching them in his word about a perfect man who would come and be a holy king over God's creation, who would lead his people and rule over the whole world. And all of this teaching was to prepare them for Jesus. All of this teaching was to prepare them for Jesus so that when Jesus came, they would know who he was and they would know why he'd come. And Jesus came telling people that he was God's anointed king. Mark chapter 8 verse 29, Peter says to him, you are the Messiah, God's anointed king, son of the living God. And Jesus said, that's right, God told you that. So Jesus said he was God's anointed king and Jesus came as well telling people that he was bringing in the day of the Lord. He said that now was the day of the Lord when the blind would see and the lame would walk and the whole of creation would be healed. The Sabbath festival was going to start because he had arrived. Matthew chapter 12, verse 8, Jesus says, The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. He says, I'm the Lord of this party which is starting, this worship party. And it's starting now because I've come. So Jesus says that he's the anointed Messiah, that he's the anointed king, that he's bringing in the Sabbath. And finally, Jesus says that he is the place where God would meet with his people. 
Jesus says that he's the place where human beings can come into the presence of God. John chapter 2, verse 19, he says, you can destroy this temple now. He's talking about the temple in Jerusalem. He says, you can destroy that one because I'm going to raise up a new temple in three days. And the temple he was talking about was his body. So Jesus comes announcing that he's God's anointed king, that the new age, the Sabbath age, is starting now. He comes announcing that from now on, he is the temple. And in saying these things, Jesus is saying that he is king of all space, that he is king of all time, that he is king of all creation. He's the second Adam who will do for us what we couldn't do for ourselves. And this is good news for us. Is this good news for us? It's fantastic news for us. It's fantastic news for us. Jesus is good news for us, and the resurrection is good news for us. Because the resurrection shows that what Jesus said about himself was true. The resurrection shows that death has been beaten, and the day of the Lord has started. The resurrection shows that sin has been overcome, and Jesus is the place where heaven and earth meet, that human beings can come into the presence of God in Jesus. The resurrection shows that Satan has been defeated and that Jesus is now God's anointed, victorious king. The resurrection world revolves around, starts with, is ruled over Jesus. Resurrection time starts with Jesus. The new creation starts with Jesus as its resurrection king. And it doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there because this isn't just about Jesus. This is about us. This is about us. This is about all of us here this morning. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, the Holy Spirit says through Paul, if anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creation. If anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. If we're in the Messiah, we're a new creation. And new creation means two things here. It means that the old has gone. It's been done with. It's finished. And something very new has taken its place. And this is what happens when we make Jesus our king. The old has gone. We're no longer the same person. And who we were has changed and instead something new has come. New desires, new hopes, new ambitions, new passions, new purpose. A new love for God, a new love for Jesus, a new desire to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And hopefully some of you here have seen that difference in your lives. I know when I look back at myself uh, ten years ago, I know that this is true. I can see that God has transformed my life completely. Before I was a Christian, my life was, was, was basically, it was all about pleasure. It was all about having a good time, and I looked for those good times in, in clubbing. I looked for those good times in sex. I looked for those good times in, in recreational drugs. And when I worked, work was all about earning money, really to basically fund that lifestyle. And now I follow Jesus. And guess what? My life is all about pleasure. And it's all about having a good time. Obviously. (laughs) Some of you have got a strange idea about what following Jesus involves. Um, It's all about pleasure. It's all about having a good time. Only now Jesus has done some kind of, of miracle in my mind and some kind of miracle in my heart. And now my idea of pleasure is worshipping Jesus forever with you guys, with my brothers and sisters in the church. Now my idea of a good time is celebrating with people who God is saving. And now when I go to work, work is all about making sure that as many people as possible are invited to that party. If anyone is in the Messiah, he is a new creation. If you're following Jesus today, you're a new creation. God has already started transforming you from one degree of glory to another. So the new creation starts with Jesus, the first fruits of the new creation. And then Jesus' people, the church, we are all caught up in new creation as we're changed inwardly to be more and more like Jesus. 
And it doesn't end with us. It doesn't end with us. In Romans, God says through Paul, Romans chapter 8, verse 21, he says that the whole creation is groaning because creation itself wants to be set free from its bondage to corruption and to obtain the freedom of the glory of the children of God. The whole creation will one day experience what we can have now by following Jesus. The the whole creation will one day be as free as we are now following Jesus. We can have this already, following Jesus. We can reach out today and follow Jesus and be a new creation. And even if you've been following Jesus for years, you can reach out today and be a new creation today. It doesn't stop. It's not a once for all. It carries on one degree of glory to another. And then we land in Revelation, chapter 21, if you'd like to go there with me. John says, I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. And if we're following Jesus, Revelation 21 won't come as a surprise. It won't come as a surprise when it happens. If we're following Jesus, then we are being prepared as the new creation for the world which we read about in Revelation 21. And what's going to happen is basically, unless Jesus comes back, we will die. And then we will wait with Jesus in heaven. And the Bible doesn't have much to say about what that looks like. And then when Jesus comes back, we will come back with him. And we'll have resurrection bodies like he's got. And the whole creation will be finished. And what Jesus has started in us will be brought to its perfect completion. And this is where we'll come to, the world that's described in Revelation 21. It's a new world, a new world. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. God's plan for creation was that he would dwell in creation with his people, and that's exactly, exactly what's going on here with the new creation. The whole earth will become the holy city, a new Jerusalem for us to live in. We're told there won't be a temple because the whole earth will be a temple. God will live with his people in the whole earth. We can come into the presence of God wherever we are. And God's preparing this city for us right now. Right now. He's getting this ready for us. You know, we tend to prepare our homes when people that we love or care for come round. You know, when my, uh, when my nephews come over, I tend to uh, make their rooms ready. I tend to uh, think about what stuff I'm going to do with them. I tend to get the food in that they like, get sweets in that they like, all that kind of stuff because I love them and I want them to have a good time in my home. Jehovah's Witnesses, knock at the door, no preparation. <laughs> The new Jerusalem is prepared as a bride. I love that. I don't think there are many people who are more prepared than a bride. I was at a wedding of some friends here in church yesterday, Colin and Holly. Some of you were here as well. And the bride didn't look to me like she'd just rolled out of bed and grabbed whatever dress was to hand. You know, I reckon she'd been planning that outfit for, I would say, at least months. It's entirely possible. I know some brides think about these things from, you know, a very young age. But she'd been preparing it for at least months. And she'd been preparing every aspect of it. The shoes, the dress, the makeup, the hair, the whole thing. And God is preparing the new earth for us to live in with that kind of loving attention to detail. Because we're going to spend eternity in that city with God. We'll come to a new world and it will be a new day. It will be a new day. You'll notice in this passage how all of the ways that we tell the time in the new earth have disappeared. Yeah, there's no sun, there's no moon, there's no seas, there's no tides, there's no night. It's just day forever. This is a new day which will never finish. A perfect day which will never come to an end. This is the Sabbath rest which will last forever as we worship God into eternity. A perfect new day in a perfect new world. And we will be God's perfect new people. 
You notice that there are, there are some things which, uh, which Barry read out there in the, in the passage uh, that won't be there in this city. There'll be no sin. There'll be no turning away from God at all. We read that nothing impure will ever come into this city. And there'll be no death. There'll be no consequences of sin, no pain, no crying, no hurt. These will all have gone. They'll all be finished. They'll all be done with. And the new creation that the Holy Spirit has already started in us will be brought to perfection and finished. That's good news. That is good news. That is good news. God's promising us the earth. He's promising us the new creation. He's getting us ready now to be part of the new creation, and he's preparing the new creation, the new city for us to live in. Everything is being prepared. Everything is being got ready so that on the big day of the wedding feast between God and his people, everything will be perfect. So this is good news for us. Jesus is making all things new. And you know, if you're here today and if there's anything that you want to be made new, anything that you want to be made better and different and improved and just not what it is, then Jesus is the place to start. Jesus is the place to come to. That might be a job. It might be a friendship. It might be your marriage. It might be your health. Jesus makes all things new. There's nothing you can't bring to him to be made new. That's his business. That's his job. It's good news for us. And it's good news for us to share. We are part of God's new creation team, team resurrection. That's who we are. We're God's plan to tell people about what he's doing. We're God's plan to invite the whole world in to a party with God forever. We're God's ambassadors, extending his invitation to the people around us so that they can come and join with us in the new creation. It's good news for us. Good news for us to share. Good news for the whole world. Let's stand together.